guys. Just finished up a Lake Oneida Open Bassmaster Open stop number two of the Northern Opens. And we finally, finally got us a dang check. How about that? What's up guys, Logan Parks here. Day number one of the Bass Master Open on Lake Oneida. It's the Northern Open stop number two. We're about to blast off. Haven't really filmed anything in practice uh, just because I've been going hard and I haven't really felt like messing with the GoPro. But hopefully we get some fish catches for you all today and hopefully we catch them up. I think we're gonna need about 18 pounds to have a shot after day one. So that's the target number. And if we catch more than that, great but we're gonna keep grinding it out. Um, hopefully we have a great day. 105, Logan Parks, Steven Snyder. I see you, Logan, right behind that wrapped Phoenix straight in front of you. Day one, I started shallow and I rotated one general area, just a grass flat in six to 12 foot of water, bounced around it all day. This was the best place I found in practice, and I didn't want to burn it up, but I also wanted to come out of here with a good bag. So I spent a lot of time in here and fished until about 10 a.m. At this point in the day, I had a pretty good bag. I had, you know, 15 and a half pounds. And I told myself if I could make one more coal to get me up, you know, a little bit closer to 16, 17 pounds, I needed to get out of here.
I left, fished a bunch of other stuff, and I came back at the end of the day. I didn't get any bites. So I was kind of worried going into day two that I may have caught all my fish out of there. And I also didn't catch any fish off of any of the other stuff I caught fish off of in practice. So didn't really know what to expect. Up that Bass Track leaderboard earlier today. Let's get started. Five fish in the bag. She checked in at 16 pounds, six ounces, 25th place. It is a game of ounces. Good start though, Logan, and good luck. Going into day two, I knew I had something figured out. They were choking that tube so far down their throat that I actually, unfortunately, had two dead fish on day one, which really cost me. Like Hank said, it was a game of ounces at this tournament. But I also knew I had to change things up and do something a little bit different because I knew I needed 18 pounds to get to championship Saturday, and I fished my areas pretty hard the first day, so I knew I was gonna need to run some new water and do something a little bit different to get to that 18 pounds. Got there on day two, and I immediately caught two good ones, like real quick, as soon as I put the trawl motor in the water. So that was a good confidence booster. I'd seen a bunch of fish coming up busting on mayflies throughout the tournament, and this one that I noticed looked like a big smallmouth. So I burned my bait in as quick as I could and threw over there, and I sure am glad that I did because he hit it as soon as it hit the water. That was sick. <laughs> yeah, you just cast it right back in there. It felt really good to get those fish in the box quick. I actually left my primary place with four keepers, including a small largemouth. But now I'm concerned, what am I gonna do? I don't know how to catch another fish based off of yesterday. I knew I was gonna have to change things up and do something different and run some new water. So that's what I did. Ran, fished for largemouth, didn't catch anything. It was terrible, terrible decision, honestly. But I was just trying to get a limit and it didn't work. So I run to a grass patch that I caught one jerking out of in practice. Throw that stun over there. I was throwing the perch color. Let's see if I can find it. Here she blows. Throwing the, ow! This fusion troubles are sharp. I was throwing the stunner in the perch color, um, just the 112, not the deeper one. Threw it over the grass, three pounder, automatic.
after reviewing this footage, I realized that the rough and bumpy ride to my next place, the grass patch, had pointed my GoPro straight up in the air, and I didn't catch it until after this fish catch. I also realized that I really horsed this fish in, but when he jumped, I saw he had all three trebles really good, and I knew that that was the fifth keeper that I needed, so I wasn't taking any chances. Small mouth are crazy at the side of the boat with treble hooks, and I didn't want one in my arm, so we just boat flipped her. I caught a three pounder there, and that was great. So I knew I was on the right quality of fish. I just had to get another keeper in the box, and I was running across the lake, and I just had a hunch to stop on this uh, rock that I had marked in practice when I graphed over it just kind of an isolated boulder, pulled up, told my co-angler I was probably not even gonna make a cast if there wasn't a fish on it. a solid bag i had 15 pounds i had a good chance to get in the check if i could just get one more big coal i had one small one in the live well still a two pound large mouth and i knew if i could get up to 16 pounds again i'd probably get a good check and get some valuable angler of the year points so i pulled up on this rock got my forward facing sonar pointed at it and it was like ah! and there was just a big round blimp sitting on top of the boulder toss that drop shot over there and it was automatic, you know, Berkeley Max out. I was throwing the flatworm and it swam right over to my bait. Dunk. that wind is picking up it's starting to get really rough really windy really wavy so i went and landed this fish in the back of the boat i wish i'd have held it up for the camera but i was in the zone and i just tossed it in the live well and made that coal this was about a three and a half pound smallmouth, which cold me up to about 16 and a half pounds and that's what happened you know three and a half pounder just like that it holds up logan parks started out with 16 six on day number one 2021 college team of the year auburn university Five fish in there today, Logan. Get you checked in at 16.6. Very consistent. I think that's the exact weight you had yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I uh, I had an unfortunate thing. You know, I, I had two of them turn over on me, so I wanted to make sure and take care of them today. But I want to say hey and uh, thank you to my beautiful girlfriend and her stepdad, Mike, right there. They drove all the way up from Alabama to come see me. And uh, shout out to uh, Berkeley. Everybody knows throw Berkeley Max in. I've never caught a fish on a tube until this week, and that's what I caught every single one of my fish on. You're in 12th place right now. Going to be a great finish for you, Logan. Good job, and we will see you soon. That's what we weighed, 16.6. Um, had an awesome time on day two. My co-angler Sam was really cool and we had a great time. Was able to get him on a couple and he ended up catching one close to four pounds. So it was just a really fun day. We're able to walk away with some good points and a good check. I want to tell you guys about how I caught them. Everybody knows what this purple pack is. It's flatworms, but it's not. It's the Berkeley Maxent too. It is the 3.5 inch Berkeley Max scent tube. I had never caught a fish in my life on a tube before this week, but grass, small mouth, it was, I was having trouble getting pissed, couldn't rip my drop shot out of that grass. So I made a switch to the tube, 3 8 ounce head. Um, Berkeley makes a great one. The fusion head, um, tube head. I was throwing it in the grass, snapping it out, was throwing it on 7.6 Veritas PLX Tournament Edition, medium heavy. But I had this new reel, which has a beautiful bird's nest in it right now from the tournament. But 
that was a little bit of user error is what they call that. But the Xenon, um, 15 pound Berkeley Trilane 100% fluorocarbon, that was the deal. That's what I threw all week long. Um, snapping that tube out of the grass and they would come up and eat it if they didn't eat it on the fall. On day one, I think I caught six or seven and four of them ate it on the fall. I caught every single one of my fish on the tube and that was that, you know, they, uh, they hammered that thing, man. It was sick and every single one of them ate it so dang far back down their throat I could barely get it out. They were choking that thing. I noticed they were puking crawfish up on my front deck whenever I'd boat flip them. Another reason why I like catching them on that bait caster. Didn't have to deal with that spinny pole. Just boat flip every single one of them. Um, that was awesome, you know, for for day one. But they were throwing up crawfish. So that's, I think, why they're eating this tube so well. And I also noticed that a lot of the crawfish they were throwing up were orange. Um, I don't have any of them playing around but I started throwing the Berkeley Maxent tube in Lucky Penny color which is an orange color and they eat it they ate it even better but it didn't really matter man I threw I mean I threw all of these smoke silver watermelon red goby whatever color I had you know in in the boat they would eat it so that was fun that was a really fun event and it was good to you know get get back on the grind. We actually moved up to sixth place. We're right there, man. If we can just finish strong, I think if we can just get four top 30s, we need four checks, not only just to check, but top 30s, I think we will make the Elite Series. We're gonna have to keep our heads down, fish, fish our hearts out and, and, you know, keep hammering. And whatever happens, happens. And if it's meant to be, you know, it'll be. And we're gonna keep hammering at the next four and try and make the Elite Series.